Trapped by the belief that I'm not good enough, bound by the limitations and the lies that consumed my world, this was me. It wasn't until I took the biggest leap in my life to know and trust the power within. And it was at that moment I made a choice. My past will not define me anymore. Hello, I am Terry Cardula, and I know I am not alone in this. Over the years, I have found that the number one mistake that we make is that we get in the way of our own success story. Yes, I said it. On this show, together we'll tackle limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, getting stuck, fear, doubt, overwhelm, and the imposter syndrome. Join us on this journey designed to transport you beyond your limitations to a world where anything is possible. This is Talking With Terry. Hello, and welcome back to Talking with Terry, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And I'm delighted to have Mindy Hebner here with us. She's an intuitive mindset mastery coach, an IBCP certified NLP practitioner, health, life, and success coach, and a clinical hypnotherapist. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you for having me here. I am very excited to share with your community and be a part of it. Yes. Okay. So tell us, give us a little backstory here of, you know, how you got to be where you're at today and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Sure. I was in, uh, first of all, I've coached, mentored, taught my entire adult life. Like this has always been my path. And for about 17 years, I was in direct sales and I led a large team trained nationally, regionally, locally for my company. So I was coaching before I knew that I was coaching because we didn't call it coaching. We called it training. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and that uh, after 17 years, the direct sales division of my company closed and I decided, oh, awesome opportunity to yeah. like step even more fully into doing coaching work. And so I started to collect certifications <laughs> and <laughs> And uh, move into habits and brain and all kinds of good stuff like that. Had my own amazing epiphany. And then here we are today, mindset coaching for mostly established female entrepreneurs who are just done trying to out hustle their beliefs. Yes, I love that. Um, So let me ask you this. So what was your epiphany that you had? I finally realized that I could achieve and be successful and not constantly hustle. I was doing the, I I used to uh, classify myself as a type A, extremely driven, still extremely driven, um, very confident. And I wholeheartedly believed that rest equaled lazy. And I didn't realize that it was given to me and and modeled for me. And then I happily took it on without even realizing, talk about a limiting belief, you know, that, that, and when that, when uh, my direct sales company closed and I had these opportunities, I also said to myself, self, (laughs) what are we doing? This is so out of alignment. There has to be a more aligned, more congruent way of being successful and achieving and still like doing all the things that you're doing without always doing, you get to yeah. be, you get to yeah. be a human. And I, through that journey, figured out that rest actually breeds productivity and creativity, that I am so much more successful when I rest, when I let myself be in, and not just rest, but ease and flow. I was very yeah. good at staying in my masculine, yes. very good at that. And didn't like had a, had a bad conception of what being in the feminine and feminine energy was. And I have spent the last several years, like claiming that feminine energy and pulling it in and pulling it in so that I could have a beautiful harmony because we need both, right? To, yeah. And to I make let's things unpack this a little bit because I did, there's a couple of things that you just said that I want to, because I think a lot of listeners and, um, and, um, you may not know this about me, but I, w- I used to be a therapist for 25 years. So I came from the therapy world and then I started like 17 years ago, got maybe even 18 years ago, got into the energy world. And then I started to unpacking quantum physics and the brain and like all of that. And I just, I'm like, 
you're like fireworks going off. And, and that really it's very similar to you just kind of changed the way I looked at life and realized that we were so many times that we were being and myself included addicted to the struggle. And yet there was this other reality out there that existed. And like, I will, as soon as you start to tap into it and you start to explore it, and you start to open it up. You're like, wait, what? Like, it's like, <laughs> We, it's like a kid in a candy shop. You're like, oh, I want more of this. I want more of this. So, because I think this is, is an important belief that you said, and that is this, this notion that we in Western world has said that if you rest or rejuvenate or reconnect or realign or whatever the word is that we use, it is lazy mm-hmm. or it's because um, we're not quote doing yeah, right. Unproductive. And it's unproductive yet. In other countries, you know, they have siestas, they like take naps, they, 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 you know, like it's, they take four months off during the summers, you know, like I was just um, in Spain this past summer and, you know, um, we were, we were touring a factory and they said, well, you, you're not going to see much because, you know, everyone takes you know, these two months off, you're like, wait, what? Like the entire two months is taken off because it's too hot to work in the factory. And they're like, nope, we just, we close our doors and everyone goes home and there it is. And then, you know, it's just really fascinating. It's a different, yes. it's a different concept. So let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, you know, you know, I guess uh, true. You probably picked this up from somebody that not only from our parents, but I think this is almost like a cultural, a world concept, you know, yes, cultural concept yes, of definitely. like, of mm-hmm. like this piece. So, you know, what was it for you that started to kind of shift that or look at that in a different way? I, I started to get tired, like, and not, yeah. you know, I take really good care of myself. I'm going to toot my own horn, right. Most of the time I take really good care of myself. And I'm continually seeking ways to even better prioritize my health and my well-being. And I just realized, not just, I realized that I got to expand my view instead of constricting it. And, And that was really the moment I really leaned into what is meditation and how can it serve me? Cause I wasn't a meditator, you know, all those years ago. And leaning into spirituality, that, that bigger thing than, you know, some people's organized religion, like a a much bigger presence than that. And how do I tap into this energy work? Like started dabbling and Reiki and not, I'm, I'm, I'm a Reiki level two. Like, you know, anytime I could be like, Oh, how do I get to learn more about this? Yeah. When I read, I can vividly recall reading a book in the summer. Uh, and now I'm going to bungle the name. Uh, but it's a habits book by Charles Duhigg and yeah, yeah. yeah. The power of habit. I think it's, uh, it, it literally shifted my, I was like, okay, now I need to know more. And then now I read atomic habits every year. I mean, you can, it's right there. You can see it on the bookshelf. That is so, I literally just interviewed somebody um, earlier today and, and we were talking about like, she had just taken this, this book with her on vacation. And we were just talking about the power of, yeah, like letting go of old habits that have, that we've created that no longer service, but then, you know, replacing them one with ones that service. And so if you guys, if the, for the listeners who are tuning in today, you know, if you've not read the atomic habits, it's a fantastic book. And then I think that the, the other one's called the power of habits um or the power of habit yeah yeah charles do so, is the is the other yeah, one. Yeah. yeah and even james clear which is atomic habits he quotes charles yeah. duhigg and someone else whose name i i can't think of when i started understanding that then i dove headfirst into nlp and neuroscience and hypnotherapy and those things to literally like my battle cry is rewire your brain i i i help you rewire your brain yeah. you get to do it you get to start right now You don't have to be stuck in this place of either a fixed mindset or a disempowered mindset, disempowered habits, disempowered relationships. Like I, I I started in health coaching and, and I, I was very adamant, my personal belief, food is not good or bad. It gives you energy or it takes it away. And I feel the same thing about habits and mindsets and relationships. They empower you or they disempower you. Yeah. There could yeah. have been a point when they were better for you. Maybe not, but there could have been. I always want to give the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And now you get to come to the place and look at, at 
a relationship, a habit, a thought pattern, a strategy and say, does this empower me? Does it move me closer to my higher self, my next level me, the involvement yeah. of me? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that I love that you're talking about disempowerment versus empowerment, because I do think that, you know, there are certain habits or certain programs that um, we go through life picking up. And in that moment, it might serve us. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think of, I, I go back to my life, my own life. And I think about like different things that has served me, but at some point I always tell people that they stop serving us, but the challenge is, is we keep trying to take it forward with us. Yes. And at that point, when we cross that threshold, that's when the problems become, that's when the, 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 the dissonance occurs mm-hmm. for us because we're like, we're trying to like take on this reality. We're like, wait, but nothing else is aligning with that. Like, mm-hmm. why is this becoming a struggle for, for us now? So I think that there is a place where that, um, it serves us and then it stops serving us. And then having the wherewithal and the insights to disengage after that point where it stops serving us. And it's like, okay, we, now we get to bless and release. Yes, and now we get, exactly. as, as we go to the next level and the next level, there's going to be another place where we're like, wait, why are we taking this forward? We're like, oh, now we get to bless and release. And now the next level and the next level. Right. Cause I feel like every, I, I've said this before on here, it's like every new level, there's a new devil, right. Yeah, that we get to, yeah. that we get to take on because we are here to grow and expand and evolve. And in this evolutionary process of being human, like we are just schlupping off the things that no longer serve us at that new level, you know, and it's, yes. it's a beautiful thing. And I, I kept thinking for myself, it's like, oh, when I get there, like I'm going to be perfect and, and complete and whole. And then I was like, wait, that doesn't, that doesn't exist. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, when we, when we, there's a couple things that we can do to one, recognize something that's no longer serving us, a disempowering habit, but also uh, curiosity is huge. Uh, there's no place for shame or guilt, but there, there's just no space for it. So you get to know that this is how your brain works. It deletes, distorts, and generalizes based on what you believe. And so if you're believing that everything has to be a struggle, you win. You're always winning the game you're playing. So here's here's how you recognize, you say, okay, this habit is, is starting to feel disempowering. A disempowering habit, when you trace it backwards, is a thought. It started as a thought, it became a habitual thought, then it became a belief, I am, right? Like anything that comes after I am, some of the most powerful words, in the universe. And so I am um, overwhelmed. I am a bad time manager, all these things that we speak over ourselves. And then we take literally like absorb them. And you're so powerful. You think a thought, you create a belief, then you create a habit to prove it. Yes. So where are those disempowering habits? Notice a disempowering habit. Notice a place where you're like, not really feeling like that's how I want to show up anymore. Okay, great. Now, who do you, who do you want to be? How do you want to show up? And, and I call this casting, casting votes for that vision. Like, then you get to say, okay, I want to be a person who thinks a human who does a woman who believes this, right? Okay. How do I get to start casting votes for that? Where do I get to start showing myself the proof that that is me already? Like I already have everything I need inside me, including yes. the resource to say, I need help. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Absolutely. So what is one of the things that you, um, you know, when we talk about, you know, um, you know, shifting this perspective, shifting this paradigm, I mean, we're really talking about this enormous paradigm that we have and those belief systems that get collected over time, which then we see our, we view our worldview out of all of those, you know, I always talk about like the invisible goggles that we have on our plate, right. Mm-hmm. Or on our face and we're viewing our world from that paradigm. And so what has been a helpful tool, a strategy, or a tip to really start to shift that perspective to shift the way we see the world. When I recognize that disempowering thought, belief, habit, I I just get to get curious about it. Like, who would I be? Who would I get to be? What would open up for me if I released this? What if this wasn't true? Because I'm making it true, right? So what if 
this wasn't true? What if I did not believe this? How does this thought make me feel? Like really asking ourselves, getting real curious and asking some questions so that we can then feel the emotion. Well, this makes me feel like crap. Okay, well, well why? Well, what makes me hold on to it then? What's, what's stopping me from choosing a more empowering thought? Sometimes it's literally that simple. It's questioning what you're thinking and saying, well, I thought this thought, I can just as easily think a more empowered thought. This is how powerful I am. We, we tend to need permission, it almost feels like, sometimes to, to show up for ourselves. Thankfully, not everyone and other people, they hire coaches and work with professionals to get that unspoken permission. Like, yes, you get to be this person. I think one of the huge paradigms that, especially as women, uh, that we get to shift, we get to be enough and we get to want more. We get to evolve. Yeah. One does not say that the other is not good enough, right? We're not, when we, when we want more, when we want better relationships, better health, more money, like whatever it is, it doesn't, it's not discounting what we have. It's just saying, I also deserve to evolve. I also deserve to shine brighter if that's what I want to do to make a bigger impact. And I think we get stuck there. I think we get stuck in the, well, I should just be content and should, I I have to say to you, I love your language. I rarely meet someone who's so aligned. You said, get to, get to, get to, I didn't yes. hear you say have to. And yes. I am, I, I so, <laughs> so shift. I, I, the first thing I do with clients is switch that word. Like, here's yes. what we're going to do. We're going to leave have to and yes. should, we're going to yeah. lay down should, and we're going to pick up get to and the next time. And in the future, I will. And, and it's yet to come, right? Like it's, it's exactly. so much, it, it's, it's the power of our words. And then what we speak into, um, but I love how you're saying, you know, you get to be enough and you also desire for more. Right. And when we, we can, we can have one foot planted and grounded in gratitude for all that we have, all that we are, all that we're being. And then we also get to have this other foot that's actively seeking, actively evolving actively growing. And you know what? They, they go hand in hand or foot and foot, if you will, but they, you know, this is our stepping process. So we can have this anchor and this, um, this profound sense of gratitude for all that we are and yet ask for more. You know, I, I often will say, you know, I, I believe in a lot of like, you know, the, the, you know, tapping into energy and having and, and use it, utilizing generative questions so that we can access more with more ease. And so even asking the question, you know, what else is possible? Mm-hmm. It starts to open ourselves up to, you know, being aware of, and in alignment with, and just invite in all the other possibilities that are here for us, all the other resources, the knowledge, the insights, the downloads, all of that yummy stuff that is here for us. And when we, we start to tap into that, we start to allow, it starts to show up, but, but we can't resist it or ignore it or put it off or, you know, avoid it, you know, because that's just shutting off the energy that's shutting off our ability to really capture and, and invite in and play with, you know, that that's in which we desire. Right. And it starts with, like you said, I just, I, I can't, you know, we we could talk all day about the the power of our brain and the power of our thoughts and you know how everything gets created twice you know once in our thoughts and once in our physical space and so you know what we're putting in there what we're fitting what your your the the verbiage you say is casting that va- casting votes you know whatever I'm whatever I'm spending my time on doing is what I am cre- actively creating mm-hmm. and I know that sometimes that's a hard lesson to look at because it's like, gosh, I'm, I'm actually, I have to take some responsibility for what I'm creating in my life. And that's a tough one, you know, to, to call ourselves out when we're like, gosh, I'm playing this victim role or I'm playing this, you know, it has to be hard role or it has, I'm playing the struggle role. Like I, whatever that role is that we're playing based Mm -hmm. on those habits that we've, you know, reinforced to create the, the story and the, and the reality, really, mm-hmm. the reality yes. of that that we're creating. So yes. let me ask you this. What is, um, again, this is fantastic. So again, I love that because you're tapping into curiosity. And what we found about curiosity is the it's one of the only emotions that activates every single part of our brain. So when we talk about tapping into curiosity, start asking those questions. And in, in all honesty, that's about slowing down. 
Like, right. Like I just think about this is slowing down, going back to what you first started this conversation with is like resting, like creating just a, just pausing, <laughs> just pausing and asking the question. And again, there's no rightness and wrongness about it. It's just asking the questions. And I think sometimes if we just slow down and like you said, um, even just taking a moment to create a practice that is that would be a contribution to us, like for example, meditation. So whatever that is for you, um, you know, invite you to step into that and start a practice and create a habit because it doesn't take long. It's like 90 days to create a permanent change in our lives. So um, anything else that you'd like to end with, with, um, you know, a tip, a strategy, a nugget that they can um, also take with them um, to start implementing today, today. Yes. Yes, yes. So you talked about taking responsibility and uh, I would be remiss to, to not share this with them. On top of continually asking yourself the question of who am I being in 100% curiosity, because this is a game changer. Who am I being? And it's just curious. It's there. There's no shaming ourselves for not being the next level version of us. We're just being curious. What's what's driving me to show up this way? You know, like, so, so aside from that curiosity, if, if taking responsibility feels heavy, how about you reframe it into stepping back into your power? Here's, here's what happens. We can live at effect and lots of us do in lots of places in our lives. And when we live at effect, we are pointing, blaming, it's the weather, it's the economy, it's the this, it's the that, right? It's you, you're driving me nuts. Like it's all these things we're pointing out all the time when we are at effect and we get a list of excuses why nothing happens in our life the way we want to have it. Yeah. This is us giving away all our power. You can call it responsibility or you could call it power. Would you like yeah. to step back into your yeah. power, then step over into cause. And when we're yeah. at cause, we get a list of results. Now here's the beautiful thing. We might not love them, but we know that we are in our power. And because we are in our power, we can then shift and get better results and different yeah. results. So I would encourage all of you to really, when you're asking yourself, who am I being also saying, am I in my power or am I giving it away? I love that. I love that because here's the thing. I, I truly believe that we're, we're always in our power but we're also either creating in our power or we're destroying in our power, there you go. right? Yes. And so yes. I think that that's, I love that question is, am I in my power? And that's a quick question that you can ask and you can take a heartbeat throughout the day, you know, like just, you know, what, the first question was, who am I being? Mm -hmm. And then the second one is, you know, am I in my power? Super simple take seconds to really recognize, but gosh, the more that you practice this and play with this, the easier it is to know when you're not. And, you know, that's really recognizing when you're in alignment, when you're not. And guess what? Am I in my power? And how am I showing up? And, you know, is this contributing to me? Is it not serving me? Is it, you know, whatever that might be. So that's just a fun, easy way to kind of almost recalibrate, you know, Definitely. throughout the day. You know, I love that. It's beautiful. It's easy. It's simple. And I love that. I love tools and strategies that people can do in seconds a day um, so that it is effortless, right? I absolutely love that. Okay. This has been absolutely delightful. Can you imagine that we've already blown away at almost a half an hour here? Like, I'm just telling you, like it just went by in seconds. Did that feel like that was like 42 seconds? Oh, okay? yeah. um, so where can, uh, Mindy, this has been absolutely delightful. Where can people connect with you, collaborate and um, connect? Yes. Uh, so I'm new on the TikTok I would love oh dear. it if people oh dear. found she just, me. She just dropped down the TikTok. <laughs> I would love it if people came and found me on TikTok. Uh, I know all the other socials will be in the show notes. I'm I'm at Mindy Hebner. I'm really that everywhere. You can find me there everywhere. Perfect. So yeah. I love it. This has been absolutely delightful. Thank you for being the light. Thank you for shining your bright light and, you know, inviting other people to do so, because when you do so, we give permission for others. And that my friends is, is what the world needs right now. We just need a lot of fire starters. <laughs> Thank you so In the much. most healthy, positive way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, that, right? that, that burning. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Thank well, you. Well, you have a delightful week and we'll talk to you soon. I am so grateful that you joined me for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, then there's just one thing that I would like you to do. Click to subscribe and leave me a rating and review. 
As my way to thank you, let's connect for a free consultation. Just reach out to me at talkingwithterry, that's T-E-R-I dot com to book your time.